Hi, so I wanted to talk about a whole class of water-based inks called ferrogallotanic inks. And that's an awesome name, isn't it? But it's the name for a whole class of inks which have an unbelievable history. They're about 1400 years old or something like that. Now the first inks actually use something like called oak galls. So let's go and get some oak galls. Now I've come out to get the materials that I need for this because I quite like to do that. I think it's important for us to have an understanding of our relationship with the world. I mean essentially all materials are taken from the nature, from our world in which we live. Some kind of process is undertaken to convert those materials into what we find useful. If you divorce yourself from that process, I think you divorce yourself from understanding. So yes, there's a bit of wind noise on this video, for which I apologise, but I think it's really equally very important to understand how that process in its essence works. That is, we go into the nature, we choose a material, we use some conversion process that makes that material useful for us. And to illustrate that process and to keep the promise of making ink videos, I've decided to use oak galls to make an iron-based medieval ink that we can use for writing. Now it's a water-based ink and the binder is going to be a gum arabic but the essential material is right here on this oak tree. What we're looking for are these things here. These are oak galls. If I pick one, the oak tree forms that around that little hole there. A wasp lays its lava on the oak, the oak tree forms its gold, the wasp lava grows and then gets its way out through the little hole. That oak gall is absolutely heaving with tannic acid. Now there's a lot of galls on this tree, so this particular tree obviously had a bit of an infestation. But once you find them, they're essential for ink making. So what we're going to do is pick a load of them. Okay, so I collected about 60 grams of galls there actually, and that's quite a lot because that's enough for about a litre of ink or so. Now you'll find this recipe all over the internet actually, there's quite a few YouTube videos on how to do it and tons of recipes. But basically, obviously, a litre is not what we're going to make here. We're going to make a few millilitres and so we're only going to use 10 grams. Now the recipe is telling you to whack it with a hammer to break them up. Actually, I just put it into this thing, which is a food processing blender. And what I get out is my oak gall powder. And it's the powder that I'm going to soak. The reason I did that is the powder will release more galatanic acid than a crushed version with the hammer. Now in our modern day we want everything instant of course and the recommended time is to leave it for a day. So you leave it overnight, come back and filter it and that's your galatanic acid solution. What they actually used to do was ferment it for two months. After two month fermentation you get a really rich ink but nobody's got the patience for that. So give it a day and then you'll have what you actually want. So to that 10 grams, what we need to do is add 75 millilitres of water. So we just pour the water on at 75 millilitres. And then we can leave that to soak. Now the ink itself isn't really complicated. You're extracting the tannic acid there, the galatanic acid. That's what we're extracting when we chop up those old galls. The other component we need is this stuff. Now, very traditionally, it's used um, ferrous sulfate. Ferrous sulfate actually is a fertilizer that you can buy at the garden store, and it's kind of a greenish blue crystal. You buy it by the kilo, actually, because it's impossible to buy it any other way. And there it is, that's ferrous sulfate. Now, you dissolve that in water. Ferrous sulfate is where the iron is in the plus two oxidation state. Now the iron in plus two oxidation state forms a complex with the gallotanic acid, a soluble complex. That enables you to write with it. But as it's out in the air, it oxidizes into the iron three or the ferric state. When it's in the iron three, it's insoluble. Now that's actually key. It's key because it makes these inks incredibly long lived. It's why they're of archival quality. There are, in fact, statutes laid down for the standard inks that can be used in administrative documentation across the world. Like I said, this ink has a huge history, has lasted for hundreds of years, and has been very important to mankind. So it was discovered, or rather there are lots of things, where you can use any iron salt as long as it's in the plus two state. Now, it's easy for us to get hold of ferrous sulphate because it's fertiliser, but actually you can make your own. If you get some brick cleaner, which is hydrochloric acid, and stick some wire wool in there, you'll get a green solution. 
that green solution is ferrous chloride and you can use that as well as you can use the ferrous sulphate. Actually, one of the problems with this is it is slightly acidic, so over time some papers and writing surfaces were destroyed by the acidic content of the ink. Another problem is that oxidation reaction means that if you leave this in the air, of course it's going from iron 2 to iron 3 just by being left in the air. So when you've made your ink, you have to stopper it, or it will precipitate out as the iron 3 insoluble part, and you'll get a sediment at the bottom of your ink, and your actual ink will get weaker. It's another reason we're not making a ton of it. It'll take me ages to use a litre. Um, any iron 2 salt will do. Ferrous chloride, ferrous sulphate, ferrous nitrate, just any iron salt. This one's easy to get hold of. You can make your own, like I say, with wire wool and brick cleaner. As long as you have an iron 2, it is going to work. Now, equally, of course, what we're doing is collecting, and you can see it's going brown already, we're collecting the galotanic acid. Now, we don't only have to use that, you can actually just buy galotanic acid. And here it is. It comes as this brown powder, actually. So you can buy the galotanic acid all by yourself if you want to. Or you can search for another source of tannic acid, and I have one right here. This is six tea bags that have been soaking in that water for a couple of hours, so I can extract the tannin from there as well. So these ferrogalotanic acids, uh, inks, are based on arm 2 and tannic acid, and we can get those from any source we want, whether it's oak galls here, tea, or buy it all by itself, or another source where we can get a concentrated form, and then any arm 2 salt. I appreciate that's quite a lot of information to give, so I'll just recap on the oak gall recipe. It's two, I'm sorry, 10 grams of oak galls in 75 millilitres of water and 2.5 grams of ferrous sulphate in 30 millilitres of water. You want to make up those two solutions. I've made more because I'm going to make three samples, but there's basically 90 millilitres of water with 7.5 grams of ferrous sulphate in there. This one I've only made... Uh, one 10 gram lot, because I'm going to do one sample with that. The other thing you need, actually, is a binder. So those by themselves will make an ink. Obviously, being water-soluble means that they soak into the paper, and then over time, they darken. So when you first apply them, they're a kind of a brown colour. Over time, they go much, much blacker, and over time, they become water-insoluble, which is why they live so long in documents. But the other thing you can add to it is... This stuff. This stuff is gum arabic, actually. It's from the acacia tree. It's the sap of the acacia tree. And you can buy it from food stores like that, as a, as a powder. Or you can actually buy it from out, out stores like that, where it's an amber liquid. I actually just make my own, because it's so much cheaper. Now, in there is two grams of gum arabic to, uh, where are we, 30 millilitres of water. So, if you make those three solutions up, this one, 10 grams in 75 millilitres. This one, 2 grams in 30 millilitres. This one, 2.5 grams in 45 millilitres. Pour them all together, you will have your ink. Equally, remember we can do that with any iron 2 and any tannic acid source. OK, let's leave this to separate for a while. So, sometime later, here are our three solutions. This is our tea. This is our oak gall extract, and this is our bought in tannic acid. And to that, I'm going to add 45 millilitres of this, which is 2.5 grams of iron sulphide in 45 millilitres of water. you should be able to see a colour change there where it goes from the brown colour that it was to various shades of black stroke green. Okay, so I've given those about half an hour and you can see they've all gone a very similar blue-black colour. There's our tea, this is our gall, and this is our bought-in tannin. So really, it doesn't matter that much what the source of the tannin is. And like I said before, it doesn't matter what the source of the iron is as long as it's an iron too. 
Now, this ink was so important that lots of countries described a specification for it. And the US specification is 11.7 grams of tannic acid, 3.8 grams of gallic acid, 15 grams of iron sulfate, 3 cubic milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid, 1 gram of carbolic acid, and all of that went in one liter of water. Now what the hydrochloric acid does is stabilize the ink actually, because this will oxidize and precipitate out. You've got a little bit of hydrochloric acid in there, it gives it a longer lifespan. The carbolic acid actually um, stops bugs growing in it. Now if we give that a test in our homemade pen that we made in a previous video, we've got our tea. Give it a wash. Our gall, and finally our tannin. Now you will notice that when I put them down under the paper, they were actually quite um, difficult to see, actually. Then as they dry, they go from blue right the way through to black, getting blacker and blacker as they, die, as they dry, and that's the oxidation of the iron. Now that was a problem for application, so another part of the US specification is 3.5 grams of aniline blue dye. What happens is that aniline will lose its colour over time and in light, but the iron will gain its colour, but it makes it much easier to see. Now you can use aniline dyes or you can use something like this which is methylene blue or methylene violet is often used and that means when you apply the ink you can see it but over time as the aniline dye fades the stronger colour of the iron comes through. So I've combined them all because there's no reason not to and I've had a little bit of methylene blue. And as you can see, it's much easier to see, but exactly the same thing will happen. As it dries, it will darken. Okay, so I bottled it up in a nice little bottle. Now, these inks aren't an esoteric chemistry lesson, incidentally. They're sold right now. It's about $60 for 250 milliliters, so you're probably looking at about $100 worth there, which is astonishing if you think about it. Because if you wanted to bother, you could actually make this stuff and sell it. Now, the time to collect oak galls is um, round about now, actually, winter. When the trees are losing the leaves, they're really easy to spot, and clearly you don't need many to make up a litre of ink. So it's um, one of those things that you could do just by walking around. It, it's absolutely astonishing, I think, and I think really quite cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know there's a lot of information there, but thank you very much for watching.